What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with... Gersh One. I'm not circumcised. <laughs> it's because uh, we weren't blessed by the rabbi. Right. And we're back at it to answer more questions in another for the Greater. Yeah. Uh, this is a non-kosher video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, please comment down below. But question for your question, because we get those questions first. first. Also... Um, YouTube has rolled out super things for us, so if you guys want to support the channel, uh, help us raise money to or for me to get that circumcision, <laughs> you can support, <laughs> you can support us on, by giving us a super thanks. It helps out the channel, and it also guarantees that we answer the question that you leave behind, <laughs> you leave behind in the super thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to make you laugh as much I, as it did. Yeah, I, every part of that was unexpected, even though I kind of knew it was coming. Adult circumcisions are fun mm -hmm. to talk about, obviously, not the actual procedure. That's <laughs> terrible, and I don't think anybody should do it. Um, but <laughs> Unless it's medically necessary and you're in an emergency. Right, right. <laughs> um, but that brings us to the question uh, left by Faba. How do unique orc clans form, and how do they establish their specialty and quirk? I think it's hilarious that, like, you probably clicked on this video because you're like, oh, cool, I want to learn more about the orc clans, and then you get <laughs> bombarded with adult circumcision. Um, orc clans are, they started out, so if you check out our 40 facts on who were the orc, or quirk, I think it was, yeah. or the brain boys, you'll know that when the orcs were formed, the old ones who created the orcs, um, gave each one of them the biological, like, marker for them to have some type of speciality, uh, and the clans form from those specialities that are just naturally biologically engineered into their bodies. So, for example, a mech is obviously going to create or um, gather around other mechs, start creating, like, a clan that's more akin to, like, technology and stuff like that. And that's kind of what you have with, like, uh, speed freaks who end up creating um, fast-moving things and stuff like that. Um, but obviously, like, each clan has their own separate uh, sub-race kind of thing, if yeah. that makes sense. The, but the, the question I have for that is, like, so obviously orcs don't like things that are different. So yeah. what happens if, like, a mech boy be, is, is a mech boy around a whole bunch of other boys that are, like, speed freaks? Like, yeah. does he get pushed out instead of getting outright killed or like how does that happen yeah instantly like all orcs are going to push uh each other's boundaries kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, and like try to kill each other but uh that's why you have to establish yourself number one through might because mm. uh, might makes right but then also like giving these orcs something good because like if it's a mech and he's in an evil sun clan obviously that mech is going to give the evil sons faster yeah. louder uh, vehicles that's true. That's so then true. that's how you earn your um, stripes kind of thing. Uh, and then also uh, when you're customized, because like the clans now are pretty, I think they're pretty solid, like Bad Moons, Blood Axe. They're pretty different too. Like if you play Blood Axe, you're going to play Commando Orcs. Uh, so you're going to be more like boy heavy. Um, if you play Speed Freaks, obviously bikes, Bad Moons, big shooty weapons, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so... That's kind of cool, um, but um, when you're homebrewing and you want to create your own clan, which the, the book gives you that opportunity, um, that's the really interesting part of like when you think like, well, how how are these clans formed? And like you have to basically <clears throat> think of like what hobbies do you have around um, an aspect of war or an aspect of aggression? So, for example, pyromaniacs within the orcs are called burna boys you can create an entire clan circled around that concept it's not going to be one of the major clans it's going to be your own separate little sub clan hmm. so yeah that's interesting i wonder how many like subspecies of orcs we have yet to see because obviously like the beast snagger boys were a new thing but it's like they were always kind of there in the in the lore yeah feral orcs yeah feral orcs exactly so it's interesting to see what other things people can come up with yeah uh, good question. And we have an entire orc playlist, too, so you want to check that out. Uh, there's one specific 40 Facts video where I, where I go over all of the different um, variations of orcs and even, like, the odd ones. So, like, uh, they're called odd boys, but, like, so I, I talk about yellers, which are basically, like, prophet orcs. Uh, I talk about mad boys, which are, like, insane orcs that, like, not not even, like, the the most, like, aggressive orcs, like, in their... their um, tribes and stuff like that so yeah. mm -hmm. 
have a good question and next one. Uh, this one is by Andrea Neji. What do you guys think would be the hybrid between humans and other races? I mean, physically and maybe what skills might they have and which ones would you want to see in the tabletop? So humans fusing or having children with Xenos is probably one of the most heretical things that could happen. Um, in the lore of the past, we did see this happen every now and then, especially with the Eldari. And we had half-human, half-Eldar super psychers that were found within the ranks of the Imperium. Nowadays, you don't really hear about anything like that, or you don't really see anything like that because of the whole xenophobia. Humankind is pretty much taught to be afraid of the xenos from birth. And so if anything looks vastly different from them, it's, it's not going to end up well. Obviously, you have certain planets that are like cut off by warp storms, and they have to ally with xeno races to prosper so i could see some type of hybrid coming out of that maybe within the tau empire but the thing that is probably going to be a huge no-no as to why this couldn't happen is because of the physiology of both species mm -hmm. obviously humans are like mammalian creatures and they reproduce the way they do and looking at like tau and like vespids and stuff like that like how would you even do it yeah, like if we can't have uh, babies with dogs, <laughs> I don't think we can have babies with vespids. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's very, it's a very finicky thing that doesn't really happen or come up that much in 40k. Yeah, but if you could combine two species together, I think it would be cool for uh, a Tau human hybrid. That'd be interesting. Yeah, it would probably look like a Tau with a nose, which we kind of already have. <laughs> uh, next question comes from Henry Bayman. Question, could you say, Ella, Henry wants you to start reading the novels. I want her to hear it when I use Chromecast to watch the videos on TV. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so I did. Ella, Henry wants you to start reading the novels. The Sound Alchemist just started reading the, the novels. Yeah. They good. <laughs> Next question. This one's by the big one. Does the Emperor have a love gun to spread peace and harmony throughout the galaxy? Uh, yeah, it's called the Space Marines. It's <laughs> Angels of Death. Yes. Um, besides that, not really. Nothing says I love you like um, a Thunderhawk gunship landing on your planet full of Space Marines that are going to utterly destroy your defenses and um, kill the planetary governor, who's a heretic. Next question. This one's by Evangelium. What do you think of my theory that the Emperor is a pawn of Zeech, and if he knows it or not? Basically, all magic and might might belong to Zeech, and what is the Emperor? The strongest psyker on the physical plane. <laughs> yes. I think that's a really cool um, concept, and I think, I, think, I think my dog's dying. It's throwing up. Yeah. Um, I think, though, that Zinch is the like changer of ways sorcerer god mm -hmm. kind of thing, but every single um, god has powers in there, like psychic powers, I guess. Right. To be a psyker doesn't mean you get your powers from Zinch. Uh, the, you get your powers from the warp, which is what also Zinch uses to use his powers. So the two don't mesh with one, if that makes sense. Right. So just because you're a psyker. It doesn't mean you follow Zeech, but if you follow Zeech, chances are you're a psyker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good question, though. Marcel Goussard says, What would you rather want? A war in heaven novel, a unification war novel, or an age of apostasy novel? <sighs> those, those are like my two favorite eras. But I'm going to go with the war in heaven. Why? Because it's just so interesting to see the old ones, which we know very little about, having a war with the Necrons, which we know what they are now, but we get to see more information as to how they were back then. And it's like this huge galactic war with like weapons and battles like grander than what we even know nowadays. And then that gets pushed up to 20 when the Catan are brought into it. Yeah. And I think it'd be really awesome to see Catan fighting in this war when these things are pretty much gods. Yeah. yeah so that'd be really cool. For me, I would uh, read Unification War, uh, just because the Unification War has that like Mad Max, Grimdark mm -hmm. universe, and like techno-barbarian warlords, and the concept of 
uh, I don't know, just that grim darkness I really uh, I like, and it's intriguing. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like, yeah, like I said, post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Yep, definitely very brutal, very uh, demoralizing to see, like, just more brutal space marines, honestly. Yeah. And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for the super thanks. Um, and if you guys... Uh, or if we didn't get to your question, ask again. That's right. As always, this has been the Sound Alchemist. First one. And we are out.